Oh, voiceover, you're such tricky work. Hello everybody, I'm James Devlin, exhibiting painter and illustrator. I've been drawing my entire life and painting for about six years now. The pieces I'd like to present to you are from my very first solo exhibition, all the way back in 2015, titled Odd Rubber Ducklings. Odd Rubber Ducklings were a collection of portraits using acrylic on canvas, depicting various odd characters some of whom I've seen around the city and others I invented in my head, or are an amalgamation of a couple of people. The two featured pieces from the exhibition were The Artist and Grandmotherhood, as seen here. I'm not sure how much I can say about the pieces specifically, but I can talk a little about my style at the time. Rudimentary and two-dimensional, focusing on things like energy over form or accuracy. In fact, I'd often play around with form, and still do to this day. The colour palette's very basic, black and whites mostly, with an extra colour in the background for an added pop. For this series I chose yellow, obviously the colour of ducklings, yellow and black, bumblebees, the sun, and electricity if you ask me. I'm not an electrician. You'll notice things like bent and crooked fingers, too many fingers, protrusions in the jawline, squares where eyes should be, and various distortions of the human form. Both figures are looking at the viewers and don't seem best pleased with their depiction. But hey, that's life. I hope that translates. And I hope you feel something looking at these pieces. I sure felt a lot when I was painting them. The series of work that I'm showing th with Dino on Culture Night um, is some of it is from my my garden series, the new secret garden. One of them has very thick oil paint and a wild variety of flowers. I've been visiting really unusual garden centres and been really inspired by the colour. And the other two pieces in that series has collage and paint embedded. One of the other paintings is like a blast of colour and there's a couple of very, very distinct reddish paintings that have a lot of colour working through that. They've been paintings that I've been working on for a number of years, layering and continually layering gold painting that it it's misleading because the paint looks fairly thin but there's a lot of layers under that including a very dark tarmac paint that I've been experimenting with and um, then I've got a small grid painting that's been that's the only piece there that's framed it's been so great to put these pieces together for cultural night I want to thank Dino I'm delighted to be showing them
show the sadness or the light or the power and overall to offer hope through the stories that I paint. I'm a storyteller. My desire ultimately is to, to learn more, to see more, to speak more through my art and to connect with people through the stories that I paint. My name is John Kavanagh and I'm an artist from Derry City in the northwest of Ireland. I've been a painter officially for the past 10 years. These are two paintings from a series called The Book of Light. The first one, Love is Angel. And the second is called The Watcher. In these pictures I used strong colours and I used a comic book feel where I divided the canvas to add a different layer as if almost they are scenes in a story. In both pictures there is reference to parts of Dublin. There's O'Connell Street, the Spire. In the Angel picture there is the Guild Hall, uh, my hometown reference. I love architecture. The Angel itself is sitting opening the Book of Light. She's inspired by a Persian myth and her energy is rising and the word love is angel is written in Farsi in both paintings. I create scenes and vignettes and stages and usually there's a central figure. It's abstracted or it's overarching. It represents a mood or a feeling or a moment. There's a flow of fantasy in the work I do. I like how we associate more layers to an idea and that maybe what I perceive to be the image, somebody else can see something different. And my work seems to naturally resonate with uh, people whereby they can see more than I possibly consciously intended. I'm very keen on languages, learning languages, recorded history, music, words from poems or lines can resonate with me. When I think about religion and belief systems, the idea of angels and saints and personified moods come to mind. My work has what I call grand titles like the Book of Light and the City of Love. Um, it's something that I like to add as a layer to my paintings. I'm interested in psychology, the esoteric, subconscious, the hidden can be revealed in my paintings. There's an archetype. There's architecture in the work I do, cityscapes. There's sacred geometry, designs, symbolism hidden among the layers. I'm very interested in meditation and yoga as well, and I feel that the practice of visualization has helped me to go deeper and deeper and tap into something more. As I paint, sometimes I am unaware of the detail that I'm creating or the layers I'm creating. The more I practice, the deeper that I can go now. My name is Zanesh Sutra and I am a figurative painter. And my recent work is about horror of the time we live in. The two paintings in this beautiful show are about lovelessness and fear. We know we live in a very strange, dangerous time and we are told what to do, we are told what we are and we are told that we are sick and we need to learn to stay, to stay sane and to just stay divine. We simply have to let some light in as we are totally controlled by lies being it the subculture bad government horrible relationships ungodly teachings this is what my work is about the first painting of girl is titled close up and it's about darkness over light. Young girl is wearing bright Sunday dress, light, 
uh, to portray the happy exterior yet no matter how beautiful her dress is nothing hides the story of the stolen youth that darkens her life light second painting called lit up is about the new hello which is guilt it is about whoever is pointing the torch at the person is making the person feel like a criminal um, in fact in society we are all treated like criminals now this painting represents big brother pointing the spotlight and if you travel to the airport today for example there is so much security that everybody is treated as a criminal so my paintings are kind of confronting horror and mortality as people are taught now to be frightened of their own death <laughs> I anyway I don't believe that artist has to change the world and sorry I can't really do that but uh, no one also will tell me what to do no one will tell me what to feel and in my world love has no fear so love is the key love is the reason I make my paintings and love is a reason to love more so the love is the subject of my work being in love is very powerful so this is where unreal becomes real invisible visible impossible possible that's pure magic so my work my paintings are blurring the man-made boundaries the boundaries between the current and timeless and the boundaries between the human and divine. Acrylic pieces. The materials actually painted on were salvaged from furniture to save resources and also look after the planet in my own little way. Um, I would use you know, discarded objects such as drawers from, a, a, you know, a, I think it was a bedside table. And it actually relates to the rest of my practice which is based on you know discarded objects and obsolete technology. Acrylics, it's a really beautiful way of expressing the fluidity now connects to emotion. The colour psychology um, of these pieces behind me, you can see the grey and I wanted that to personify the, the mundane uh, feeling of being stuck and the bright colours that contrast that personify the, the life that music, musicians bring into such a dull, strange time, COVID, because I didn't want that feeling of rigidity, I wanted it to free flow, like improvisation with jazz, for example. I wanted to experiment with the, you know, different techniques and the different feel and texture of different um, materials. The fun part of being an artist is experimenting with lots of, of different you know, mediums and forms. Art should have no boundaries.